What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 25 and we start today's episode off with some player training and also going in for yet another pre-contract signing. Yes, this guy right here, Maxime Pounge. The left back, 75 overall, 24 years old from Bordeaux. I don't know why I keep trying to sign players. I don't know how to pronounce the names of. But either way, this guy looks very, very good indeed. And as you can see, this was just before transfer deadline day and pretty much straight from the get-go in transfer deadline day. I advanced once, and as you can see, after Bucard goes to Fratton Park for £100,000, our substitute goalkeeper, 28 years old, 60 overall, 100 grand, 75 meters. We're not really using him too much. And we've got another goalkeeper that's just as good in the academy. As as you can see, Maxime does come in and does become our fourth signing of the January transfer window on a pre-contract. So another freebie there. He will be our most paid player by quite a distance as well on 25 grand a week, which in all honesty, I'm not entirely sure was a good thing because as I mentioned in the last episode about five times, I know pre-contracts, as I'll always say, are the best way of improving your team because you know you can sell them on uh, for a guaranteed profit uh, after a few months or a year or, or however long you want to keep any team for you can sell them on uh, sell them on anyway for a profit 25 grand a week is very steep for Paris FC that's that's an awful lot of money isn't it because you know yeah sure we're getting it for free and everything but it's still 25 grand a week that's a lot that's an awful lot so maybe that wasn't a good idea especially when you consider the fact that we're not even playing four at the back right now we're playing three at the back which means we don't have any left backs or, or full backs in our team I should say so should I have done that deal I'm not entirely sure but at the end of the day 75 overall 24 years old even if he doesn't even play too many games next season despite being our highest paid player we could still sell him for a couple million at least in the January transfer window and that ended transfer deadline day as well a pretty uneventful one selling Bucard and also bringing in Maxime on a pre-contract pretty routine stuff really and there you go and also falling out as well as you can see a look at you come up for your report here this is Cardinale that I showed you in the last episode we signed him to our academy looks very good indeed doesn't he and we also offer a contract to Fabian Miguel who I'll call Fabian Bartes 2.0 because he is bold and like Fabian Bartes has the same first name and just reminds me of him for some strange reason but uh, either way we're going to sign a goalkeeper to our first team because he like Barmy you know I wasn't really sure which one was going to be the successor here at Paris FC to take over from our experienced goalkeeper that we sold at the start of this season but we've given Barmy that responsibility and he's taken it on very very well indeed he's on his way to becoming the best player in the Paris FC side or I think actually now because of the training he's been given he is the best player in the Paris FC side and uh, you know Barmy's going to be a star in his Paris FC side for many years to come and hopefully for club and country as well possible future captain if Thierry Ambrose gets sold or something don't really know but either way Barmy's been fantastic but Miguel 83 to 89 potential uh, 60 overall which is what Bucard was when we sold him to Fratton Park to go to Portsmouth so for me that's just perfect business right there and I'm totally happy with that deal but uh, still following out a squad report and look at the league table as well as you can see 15 games to go in the league and although our last two games were draws against Marseille and EA Guincamp we are still top of the table now can we win the league with Paris SC or 15 games to go it's tight at the top there's only a few points separating the top four teams but right now we are still leading the way and are in pole position to claim the title come the end of the season if I can do it if we can pull it off it would definitely be one of if not my best achievements ever but either way still a long way to go but we are top of the table with 15 games remaining in the league earn season still for the first game of today's episode here we take on Troy's at home uh, our last two games of course in leagues I mentioned right there have been draw so we're hoping to return to winning ways in this one taking on Troy's first chance of all to the away side and a second chance of all to the away side as well they're currently sitting in the bottom half of the table as things stand right now they didn't look like it though when starting this game off very very good indeed in the first five minutes Barmy had already been, uh, been, uh, been called in to make a good save and uh, still his goal was being peppered with shots, but it was still nil-nil as things stood. In the ninth minute, we had our first chance of the game, though. This cross found Boger at the far post, uh, sorry, Thierry Ambrose at the far post even, but the header went wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. And in the 36th minute here, another good chance for us here as Boss Gagli wins the ball back for us here. The centre-back goes on a run, takes over the halfway line, plays a great through ball into Thierry Ambrose, and once again, Thierry Ambrose has the finish on him and makes it Paris FC 1, Troyes nil. So our skipper has now got goal number 20 in the league and season. Nice assist by Buscagli as well. Winning the ball back as the uh, centre-back going forward and then playing a great free ball inside. And Thierry Ambrose opens up his body, curls into the far corner. How many times have we seen that during this series? And 20 goals for Thierry Ambrose this season. I don't think he will hit 37. 
I have the confidence in the guy to do it, but I just don't think he's going to get that uh, get to that number with the games remaining. But either way, he's definitely on target to hit at least 30 goals once again for Paris FC for two successive seasons. And, you know, again, when I started this season off, I was thinking, can Thierry Ambrose adjust to playing in a higher division? Well, the answer is definitely yes. He's been fantastic, and he does open the score here to make it Paris FC 1, Troyes 0. He almost got his second goal of the game here, but his shot went over the bar and behind for a goal kick. But it was how the game would finish. We do return, uh, return to winning ways after two games about one and beat Troyes by a goal to nil. So back-to-back -back clean sheets for the first time in a while and good to get the win as well. But to be honest, in this game, I think Troyes will feel a little bit hard done by by the fact they didn't get a win in this game or at least, and at very least, a the point. They played better than us. There's no denying that on the stats. They started off the game very brightly as well. Barney made a couple of great saves, but in the end, it was all about being clinical in that game and we certainly were. So we returned to winning ways with the victory in that one. And following that as well, we had another international management offer and uh, this time it comes from Canada. It's been a while since we've had an international manager offer. This one coming from Canada, which I thought was quite funny, is I'm, of course, managing them in my regular career mode save. But uh, still, here is Fabian Miguel. He shows great potential. He's uh, uh, only six foot for a goalkeeper, so not as tall as he possibly uh, could be, the 17-year-old. But either way, he looks quite good. And he just he just reminds me of Fabian Bartes. And one of the reasons why as well is because he's been given the number 16 jersey automatically by the game, which obviously a little known factor, but Bartes used to wear number 16 when playing for France. So I just thought that was kind of interesting there, how he got given the number 16 jersey automatically. But uh, either way, Miguel comes in. I won't call him Bartes 2.0, don't worry. But uh, either way, he does remind me of Fabian Bartes. And uh, Miguel is going to be our backup goalkeeper for probably many years to come. So we take on Leon here for the second and final game of today's episode here. And we get off to a terrible start in this one as well. Looking to get back-to-back -back wins in this one, but instead would fall behind just 21 minutes in. Lacazette with the goal here. I've used him before on FIFA a few times. I know how good the guy is, and the AI know how to use him as well. He receives the ball here on the edge of the area, goes for goal from just inside the area, and what a great finish that one is as well. Into the top corner, past Barmy. He may have been distracted by the snow there, but in the end, I think it was a great finish by Lacazette. Really good strike, and it is Leon 1, Paris FC 0. We had a good chance to equalize here, though, in the 28th minute. Say Maximin finds his Saka, who goes for goal. It's a good save by the goalkeeper, though. But eventually, as you can see, after the shot, the goalkeeper uh, gets the ball up in the air. It's headed behind for a corner but the referee then gives a free kick as Sisaka was impeded when going through to shoot even though he got a shot away. So free kick to us here and a freebie if you will. A chance for us to get ourselves another shot on goal from just outside the area. 20 yards out put three men over the ball. Two of which ran over the ball and then Boga decided to go for goal with a drilled shot but it went over the bar and behind for a goal kick and I think I made the wrong choice there as Thierry Ambrose, the man in form was waiting for the layoff but it was still Leon 1, Paris FC 0 as we went into the break. Leon started the second half though pretty brightly in seven minutes after the restart had a good chance to double their lead this shot went way over the bar though and behind for a goal because Leon still led the game by a goal to nil and on the hour mark here another good chance for them to double their lead Grenier crosses this corner into the centre Lacazette wins the header but can't get a second goal of the game goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick so still Leon 1 at Paris SC nil. the home side were playing better we had a great chance to equalise here in the 71st minute and I was livid as well because Socrier who scored in the last episode against Red Star for his first goal of the season the old man here the number 37 I brought him off the bench, he took it round the last man, was going through to shoot, and got taken down from behind, and Socrier's a big guy, so if he hits the deck, there's surely some contact, the referee gave nothing though, and said play on, and a few minutes later, I was even more livid, because Lacazette headed in this cross to get his second goal of the game, and make it Leon 2, Paris SC 0, and surely wrap up the points of the home side, but just a few minutes before that, of course, because of that no penalty award, I would have thought to myself, Ambrose would have taken that, because of his red hot form, there's no way he would have missed it, we would have been back on level terms, but instead, Lacazette kills off the game and does make sure that after that goal, Leon will be claiming the three points. They almost made it 3-0 here. Eight minutes for the end. Barman made a good save though and turned his shot behind for a corner, redeeming himself after making the error for the second goal where he came out for the cross and got nowhere near it. So still Leon 2, Paris FC 0. And the final chance fell here. Lacazette going for goal, looking for his hat trick with a good save by Barmy as he turned it behind for a corner. And actually, the final chance fell here. Forgot about this one. Lacazette finds Gonlons. Back to Lacazette here. Lacazette through to Grenier. Back towards Gonlons who goes for goal. 
well, but surprised to shot over the bar and behind for a goal kick. But it was how the game would finish. Final score, Lyon 2, Paris FC 0. So we lose for the first time in quite a few games. Disappointed about the defeat, and I'm not going to lie, Lyon did play far better than us. There is no denying that whatsoever. We didn't really deserve anything from the game, but Socrier, in my opinion, was definitely fouled and should have won us a penalty, but the referee decided not to give one. So I feel as though we were a little bit harshly done by there because, yes, of course, I know. We see the stats right here. Leon did play far better than us. No one's going to deny that, but I felt it was a clear penalty and we didn't get the rub of the green. We're not going to complain about it. That's just football and that's how it is. But that does in the episode, though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you're enjoying today's episode of Club and Country, then please leave likes. It's, of course, much appreciated. It really helps my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.